Well, hello and welcome. I don't know what words will suffice in this weather. It is a freezing cold, record snowfall out here in Davos, and Davos 2018 has never been bigger for India, which is what we're going to try and discuss, get a sense of, even as the Prime Minister comes out here in Davos ahead of that keynote speech. This is really the Curtain Razor Show. And with me are three eminent people who are freezing, just like I am. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll start by introducing the lady, Nidhi. Tanti, thanks so much for being with us. So she needs little introduction, but I will still introduce her, Vice President, Head Business Review Committee, and New Business, Suzlon Energy Limited, a world leader in renewable energy solutions. Nader Godrej, the MD of Godrej Industries, but interestingly also a published poet, and that's what I'm looking forward to hearing about. And he speaks six languages. I don't know how people do that. Uh, interestingly, Amit Kalyani also with us. Uh, I did speak to his father a short while back, Executive Director Bharat Forge. Thanks so much for being with us. Maybe if I could start with you, you know, we met Mukesh Ambani, we met Baba Kalyani, we met some of the, the biggest business leaders. Um, what is the challenge for the Prime Minister as he tries to put forth his idea with the theme, India means business? What is his biggest challenge? I think probably the agenda to start with. And the reason why I say that is, India is really sought after right now. I think everybody's looking towards India. Prime Minister Modi is here, and the last PM we had was 20 years ago. So there's huge expectations from India, huge expectations from the new government, mm -hmm. and the coined in term of new India. So I mean, there's enough expectations that's riding on the factor of agenda itself. Yeah. And I think what we really need to look forward to right now from Mr. Modi, apart from various reforms and paradigm shifts that he's already done, from demonetization to GST and so forth, Something that's at a global capacity. I think we've been really preeminent at a domestic capacity, but something that we look forward to, every Indian look forward to when it comes to global scale. So be it trade relations, be it new ventures. FDI new was one message. Exactly. Yeah. So FDI and with the hope and expectation that President Trump could have been here, but we don't know yet. We don't know yet. Yeah. And that could be, again, on the India-US foundation of how we can increase the trade and various re regulations and relations there. Okay. So. All right. Interesting. A lot of thoughts. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if Donald Trump doesn't come, then Prime Minister Modi's <coughs> speech would probably be the, the marquee event. Uh, Mr. Godrej, if I could come to you. What do you hope to hear from him? What's, what, what's the key out there? I hope to hear from him that there will be more reform in India. The budget is just coming up. Yeah. And so uh, there has been talk of reducing corporate taxes. That should help uh, the economy grow. Yeah. Uh, I hope he continues on his path of making business easier. Mm -hmm. uh, we still, there are still pending global issues on taxation of global companies which needs to be sorted out. Uh, many investors are very worried about our, the slow nature of our judicial system. Yeah. So people and, would and be And what's happened recently also, I suppose. Yes, yeah. yes. So uh, judicial reforms might also help. And frankly, uh, this year we grew slower than China. And to catch up with China, we need to grow much faster than China. I'm looking forward to hearing something about how we can get to double-digit growth. All right. Well, wow. uh, double-digit growth, that's going to be interesting. Do you think that's realistic? Even as you try and answer another question that I could supplement it with, which is that President Xi was really the, the show stealer in a way last time. And what's important for many Indians is that the Prime Minister, with his great speech skills, can actually beat that or at least compete with it. How do you see that panning out? Well, I don't think the President, uh, I don't think uh, our Prime Minister needs to beat anyone. I think India has its own position. Prime Minister Modi has his own standing in the global, uh, sure. you know, in the sphere. world, yeah. in the global sphere. I think uh, we have to turn what is India's challenge into our biggest opportunity. We have one of the most um, able youth yeah. which are getting ready to hit the workforce. I think a few things around skilling and training, mm -hmm. which is different from what we do today. Mm -hmm. You know, Getting an engineer to go for four years to an engineering school and then do coding or do investment banking is the biggest waste of time. So we need to look at how do we attack skilling in a way that makes people much more effective at what they do through much shorter learning. Mm -hmm. And it could be that someone does something for two years, three years and then goes back to learn. Okay. And you keep learning. I think that's one thing that a uh, learning program which the government is trying very hard to do I think is something that will make a big difference. All right, uh, just one question. Uh, you know, anyone who wants to invest in India uh, has always 
had his concerns, and I'm sure the global leaders who will be addressed by the Prime Minister today will, will ask those questions, uh, corruption or any other issues. How do you deal with the fact that there is big data, which is either in support of what Prime Minister Modi has done or not in support of, and there is big narrative from the Prime Minister? So let, let me yeah. answer that. And yeah. I, I know this firsthand because of the many few plants that we've set up and are setting up in the last few years. You know, we are talking about investing in India, yeah. but we build factories in Maharashtra, in Andhra Pradesh, in Gujarat, states. in Kerala, in states. <clears throat> we need the states to be aligned in implementation. Okay. So I have seen some states where in 21 days you get your clearance, mm -hmm. no questions asked, and after that, once it's if you don't get it, it's deemed. And then you have states where you can buy land from the government, and then six months later, somebody will come and challenge it for, for you. So how do you deal with this dichotomy? Mm -hmm. The states need to be competing so, with each other and be aligned to what the center is trying to do. Okay. Our, out here at the World Economic Forum, there's so much that's happening. Uh, you've been here a few hours a day, I suppose. Uh, it's cold. It's record snowfall. But uh, is the heat coming from India? The agenda of India means business for you. Are you hearing that? Anyone who wants to take that? Uh, yes, I think people will be eager to hear India's story. Mm -hmm. Xi Jinping made a big impact last year. Mm -hmm. uh, Donald Trump's election probably gave him uh, a bit of help mm -hmm. because he took America's globalizing agenda, which Trump seems to be abandoning, yeah. and from uh, uh, inward-looking communist country, he gave the message mm -hmm. that uh, China was ready to take up the mantle of global leadership, was ready to fight for free trade. Yeah. And it was an amazing and uh, surprising speech, which made a big impact. Mm -hmm. uh, now, I doubt we will have anything as unexpected from Mr. Modi, but uh, Prime Minister, I, I'm sure, will make a very good impression. All right. Uh, you talked about power, uh, soft power. Uh, I think that is something India is chasing this time. Uh, and I'll just give you examples. Uh, the Prime Minister out here with the biggest delegation of 130, uh, two yoga acharyas trying to spread the message uh, that you know, India has great culture, and uh, Shah Rukh Khan out here to promote Bollywood. All these three avenues, uh, with, with many others, I suppose, you know, hitting hard on the agenda that India is a great place. Uh, and, and Prime Minister Modi being here for the first time invited a Prime Minister of India to be the keynote speech, uh, speaker. Do you think we're c at the cusp of actually becoming a soft power? We're ready for that? I think so. See, I, it, there could be skepticism, and there always has been. But why not? I mean, if, if India has progressed so much to where we are, and power is, again, a bit of a subjective term. You know, when you try to put it always into perspective of what really means on the hard power and the soft power. But I, I would say from a progressive nation that's done so well mm -hmm. over the past few years under the leadership of Mr. Modi and is still continuing on the rise with various aspects of agenda, you know, be it, you say, from the meditation of Acharyas or to pick up from Bollywood and other aspects, the word, the message of India being this new India is spreading over. Mm -hmm. So not really picking on the aspects of definitely being onto the power dichotomy, but I would say from a nation perspective of where India stands now, from the global rating, we've seen dramatic improvements for India. Have you seen them in uh, renewable energy, for instance? Yes. Okay. I mean, there could be debates, right? We've been discussing onto the tariff levels. We've been discussing onto the volume impacts and the Seki biddings. Okay. But when we think about the fact that earlier, when I, when I talk about wind energy, it was restricted to nine windy states. With the bidding coming in now, it opens up multiple states. And, right. you know, just picking on from Mr. Ahmed said, it's at the end of day, the state power that we're looking at. Okay. So spreading over to more state leads okay. to more production, more volume. All right. So promise is there for India. It just has yes. to be converted now. Uh, thanks, all of you, for being here. Just want to ask you to leave us with one snow story, <laughs> each one of you. Who's shooting first? I'll let Amit start. Well, um, <laughs> It normally takes 10 minutes to get here walking. It took an hour and five minutes to get here today in a car. And only because it's snowing so heavily that I would have probably been drenched by the time I got here. Yeah, so. yeah it took me half an hour uh, walking. And I brought my son along to help me in case I slipped. And uh, earlier today, while I was walking, there were two ladies walking under a tree. Okay. And all the snow from the top of the tree fell on their heads. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. The story I'll tell uh, of hers is that she came here without a coat. And then she had to run back and get hers. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, all of you, for being out here. Let's hope that the Prime Minister and the Indian contingent can actually bring all the warmth that's needed to Davos. And boy, is there a lot that's needed. Thanks.